everyone. Uh, it, it's good to see all of you. Uh, we're, I'm grateful to be here, and I'm grateful to be here with Ivan Zhao, uh, the co-founder and CEO of Notion. Hi. Hello. Um, I imagine most people in the room uh, know what Notion is, but for, for the few who don't, uh, can you maybe just tell us a little bit about you know, how you would explain Notion? Um, yeah, it's always pretty difficult to explain what Notion is. Uh, actually, how many of you here use Notion? Would you prefer? <laughs> Thanks. Um, uh, so you probably use Notion for uh, notes, documents, for manage your projects. Uh, some of you use for manage your company knowledge base. Uh, we describe Notion as a connected workspace for your documents, for your knowledge base, and for your project management. And uh, the problem we try to solve is there's just so many tools in the world, especially work tools. Right? Things got fragmented. And it's hard to find things. We try to bring all the essential tools that you use in your personal life and work life in one place, and that place is Notion. Um, a lot of people understand Notion as a consumer business, thought us as a note-taking tool. It's actually Notion is predominantly a business tool. Uh, most of our business are B2B. Um, and that's why it's kind of important to be here today, because startup, this community, is, is at the intersection of B2B and B2C. A lot of you are founders use Notion personally. You also have companies uh, that runs on Notion, so it's good to be here. Yeah. Awesome. What, um, take us back to the beginning. Like, obviously, Notion is ubiquitous today. That was not always the case. What inspired you to start Notion, and then what were the early days like? Yeah, early days. Um, so I just described Notion as for well, document notes, all the productivity stuff, right? So. Uh, Notion is actually not about productivity. Like, a secret is I'm actually not very organized myself. I'm not a productivity person. Um, Notion is about computing. Uh, what do you mean by that? It's like we're based in Redwood City right here. Uh, 20 minutes away is Palo Alto. Right? It's like we're the, one of the birthplace of modern day computing. And I was really inspired by um, people back in the 60s, 70s, and early 80s around Palo Alto area, thinking about uh, what do we do with this thing we call computers that we're all familiar with today. Just like SF explosion with AI right now, there had an explosion about personal computing. And uh, those people are, um, you know, like they took acid, they, they, they really think about how to put a monitor on this mainframe machine that's locked up in your basement that's become interactive with it. Right? So you can do things with it. You can amplify human intelligence. Um, when I was in uh, uh, college the last year, I read a paper by one of those computing pioneers. Uh, his name is Douglas Engelbar. He's more famous for inventing the mouse. The paper's title is Augmenting Human Intellect. And uh, when I read the paper, I was like, OK, this is arguably the most leveraged thing I can do with my skill set for someone who can code and design. And you, it's better to create another a product, a tool that let other people to create software. So um, that was 10 years ago. And then I had to figure out how to uh, move down from Canada to here. I have to start a company. And, uh, and here we are. Uh, that kind of company sounds complex to, like that kind of product seems complex to kind of get started. And you, you've talked in the past about having this sort of aha moment where you realized like the initial version of Notion wasn't working and you had to shrink the team and move to Kyoto and sort of like rethink things. Just what, what was that part of the journey like? Like when, what was that transition like? So I've been working on this thing for 10 years. Um, I would say probably the first Half of it, it's meandering, just haven't, couldn't figure it out. Um, so what I just described is like the more romantic part of computing, the, the dream that you can call a vision or dream, but how do you take that romance into a product? It actually took a long time, at least for me. Uh, how do you turn that romance into a product and from a product into a, a, a business that people are willing to pay for and from a business into a company that hopefully lasts? Uh, if I knew how hard it is, I, I might have to think again, <laughs> but it took a long time. Um, so we talk about the vision or the, the romance of computing. Right? Like most people use their computers more like a typewriter, internet browser, or YouTube machine. 
how can we let more people unleash this power of computing, right? Um, the, the original idea was actually kind of like, if you play the first version of Notion, it's kind of like um, um, Webflow meets Figma. It's like a web app builder, right? It's pretty powerful. You can create a lot of web apps quickly, handle the storage for you. Uh, but then people don't know what we, we share with a lot of friends. Like, they don't know what to do with it. They're just like, OK, I, I don't want to create a web app. Like, many of you probably start a company you want to create a web app, but most people don't, right? So um, they just like, my boss is asking for me. I need this report for tomorrow. I need to give me a spreadsheet, give me a document. Uh, so it took, at least took me a long time to realize people don't want that, even so that's romantic for me, for our company. And so what do we do with it? Um, well, in order to get to ubiquity, in order to get to something that people use, let's start from the most ubiquitous tools that people already use. And what is that? That's essentially Microsoft Office-like, right? A document tool, a database, spreadsheet-like tools. And then can we see that, can we hide a visual programming power inside a Microsoft Office-like uh, environment? So that has been the, the sweet spot that's at least I discovered that's satisfied my own need for the romantic part of it and also what the market wants. And, and by that time we figured it out, five years ago we ran out of money, so I like, have to ask my mom for a little bit of help and uh, <laughs> you guys helped me. So then, yeah, then launched 1.0 then that's the rest of it. Yeah. One, of my, uh, one of my favorite anecdotes, which you know, is I think you were one of the earliest adopters of Figma, which is also a fantastic company. And the Figma like, was, had analytics, and they showed that there was like, this one person in Japan that was using Figma 18 hours a day, and they assumed it was a bug. Uh, but as it turns out, it was you designing Notion 1.0, uh, which, like, uh, which is pretty amazing. Um, what, like, when did it start to work? And I feel like one of the things that defined Notion 1.0 was just like how community-led it was, like this sort of passionate global user base. Uh, like, how how did that, you know, how did Notion Mondo start to grow? How did that community form? And then sort of how did that translate to this sort of startup adoption? Right. Um, so community is a buzzword, right? In the past many years, and community-led growth. Um, Notion is more or less community-led. Uh, like we launched our 1.0 on Product Hub. It's like it's very commu international community driven. It's actually internally we have a metric we track. It's like what percentage of Notion users are international. Um, that number has been hovered around 70 to 80 percent since the very beginning. It's a lot higher than a typical um, normal startup. And uh, it's a good thing. Um, we, our best theory is why that's the case, because we launched on, through the community. We launched through Pradahan and the startup community, which is largely international. Right? And once we launch that, uh, the distribution has largely been organic after that. So initial seeding is international, then the spread is word of mouth locally. So that 70, 80 percent number has been stays the same uh, since then, since the 1.0. Uh, we have a lot more than just uh, startup user now, but startup is still one of the most important sector for us. Uh, um, yeah, another metric we track internally is what percentage of incubator, what YC company runs on the Notion. Um, it was more than half the YC company runs on Notion. We want that number to be 100%. Right? So, we, so we do things like, um, actually, for all the startups here, if you're part of startup, you can just go to notion.com slash startups. We are having, uh, you can use Notion for free for many months, including all the AI stuff. So it's a very important part of uh, our, our um, customer base, and we believe the, the next generation of enterprise are startups, so we, need to, we want to be the default tool for all of you. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, uh, you, mentioned, uh, you mentioned Engelbert earlier, and for those who have not watched, I think you should, like, yeah. on YouTube, go check out The Mother of All Demos, which I think is 1968, which is, like, mind-blowing. Is it 68 or 69? 69. 60, okay, 1969. But it's, like, it's like Zoom. It's video conferencing. It's the mouse. It's just, like, the, it is, a, it is as mind-blowing as some of the sort of, like, GPT-4 and ChatGPT demos of late. Um, but so you mentioned Engelbert earlier. Um, obviously, we're at, like, 
in my opinion, probably the most interesting moment in computing in the past 30 or 40 years, I think probably since like the PC. Um, Notion was one of the first sort of wide scale tools, broad scale, broad scale tools to sort of integrate LLMs. Like what was the journey to Notion AI? Um, how did you get started and how did you think about integrating it? Yeah, actually how many of you are working on an AI startup? Could you raise your hand? Okay, I expect to be more, but. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, I think it's, it's a big deal, at least personally to me, it's, it's a huge deal. Um, if you think about, at least this is how I think about it, we talk about angle bar, right? Like that, then the 60s, 70s generation make personal computing, personal computers happen, meaning that before computers are in mainframe machine in your basement, you don't see it, just large number crunching. And angle bar, actually he was around here, he thought, okay, why don't we put, a, He's from the Navy before, so he let, why don't we put a, a, a radar monitor display next to a computer so a computer can be interactive. Right? He's original inventor, one of the inventor of mouse. That's why he invented mouse, right? Once you have a display, you need to point things on the display. That's why we need the mouse. He tried different kind of thing, mouse works, because your blood flows downwards. He tried like light pan, his blood this doesn't feel comfortable. A right? bunch of other form factor thing. That's personal computing in the 80s and made personal computing abundant. Then we go back to the 90s. Um, 90 was like, I didn't live through there. I don't think that's before your era too, right? Like, okay. Uh, no, no. Like the dot com era, right? So I was a teenager. I, I lived through it. I lived, but we, we, you're not working, so. Um, the internet and the web made distribution abundant. Like it's really easy to just push something to the world and other people will find it, right? So that's an important thing. You can, you can say like 1910s, 2010s is the cloud. AWS has made computing on demand abundant. You no longer need servers in your basement. You no longer need to manage them. You just have as much compute as you want. Um, AI feels like it's made intelligence abundant and on demand. It's quite a different type of material, right? It's like, is that, I feel, as large as internet, probably large, as could be on the scale of printing press maybe. Um, probably not as large as language, but it's, it's pretty, pretty significant. And uh, yeah, it's a new type of what, then what do you, and what do you do with it? Right? And the problem, I was, it, like it, this thing happened with internet, what happened with cloud, largely, like once you have something new, uh, we understand the new thing through the past. Uh, um, I'm not sure, like, um, like one of the person that we talk a lot inside the company is Marshall McLuhan. Uh, it's like a Canadian uh, culture guy. Um, he has this quote that we really like at Notion, called, uh, we're going towards the future faster and faster through the rear view window. Like, the way we can understand the future is through understanding the past. Uh, and it's gonna take us many years to understand what to do with this AI thing, right? Like, initially, GPT-3 launched, most people don't know what to do with it. Only until the form factor changed to a chat GPT, then blew up, because we understand it. I think we're just at such a beginning inning to understand what to do with this, and with, what to do with intelligence when it become abundant, and, uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a fun ride, you know? Yeah, it will be fun. Where, um, where did you start? I mean, the, there was an early release of Notion AI, I think a couple of months ago, but, and I agree with you, I think this is a multi-decade, like it feels like we're in the very early innings of a multi-decade uh, sort of transition. Like, where did you start? And then, like, almost more interestingly, like, where do you want to go? Like, wh what do you want to do over the coming months and years? Like, how do you want to leverage GPT-4? Like, the, like with Notion? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah um, so, to, to those who are not familiar with Notion or Notion AI, we launched, uh, a couple months ago, we launched, officially l launched Notion AI, which is largely for writing. Uh, but to me, that's like a baby step, what you can do with it, right? So if you think about what Notion is, Notion is essentially a document editor plus a table and a relational database together. That's our Lego bricks, right? So and what is language model? 
it's uh, something to do with text. So the machine can understand your text, can derive meaning with it, can help you move information around. Right? So sometimes it feels like kind of lucky a notion that in that the last five years we've been building the bells and whistles around this kind of collaboration, text editor plus database thing, then boom, this AI thing drop in that's like a new car engine for us to do things. And we're still figuring out what to do with it. Um, I think more or less we're still in a sweet spot for it because the company's still very small so we can move fast. And we have some distribution compared to startups so we can, we can take advantage of that. Um, the writing feature we just launched is just the first feature, but naturally the next one will be project management related and it will be knowledge base related. Just we're going to apply AI to a different product that we're working on. Uh, we're still figuring it out. So, but it's fun. No. Haven't had this much fun for a long time. That's awesome. What, um, how big is, so in terms of just, in terms of employees, how, how big is Notion today? 400 something. That's, and how many, how many users do you serve? We officially say it's 20 million plus, but a lot more than that. So uh, it's amazing. Uh, I mean, it's this huge community for like. I mean, it's a very efficient company. Um, what you talked about in the, you know, you talked about Engelbert and augmenting human intellect, and the, the sort of the initial part of the initial vision for the company was this kind of tool making tool. I'm curious how you think about that initial vision, I mean, it was kind of like the OG, like low code, no code, it had like a Stripe block, it was, uh, you could charge people, uh, it, was, uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, like, how do you think about sort of tool building versus knowledge work, especially in the context of like AI that can write like pretty exceptional code? Yeah, I think AI changes the equation, at least, um, like this title is uh, Augmenting Human Intellect, right? That vision states, but the implementation of that vision is changed, will be, should be changed. Uh, because the Lego bricks different. Now that we have this new Lego brick that's intelligent, it can understand software itself. Um, but at the end of the day, at least for Notion, we care about uh, building tools. Like, it's like almost like, like Steve Jobs has this quote, like bicycle of the mind, right? What is that? Can we create a better version of that as well crafted and hopefully powers our life and our company around us? That vision does not change. Uh, how to do it with AI is, will be different than how to do it with no code, low code. So the shape of the implementation details changes. So, yeah. This AI truly changes a lot of things for us. No. What, um, what advice would you have I'm sure there are a bunch of people in the audience and that are watching that are thinking about how to leverage things like GPT-4 in their own products uh, and in their own businesses. What advice would you have for people that are trying to think about like, how to integrate this in an interesting and differentiated way? Yeah. Uh, I don't know much better than the market, so it's a lot of just um, uh, ideas here. I would say, actually, an analogy will help, right? Uh, um, if you think about what's, what is this period most similarly, most similarly to, um, early electricity is actually quite similar to this, right? Think about it. Late 1800s, like, we have this thing called electricity. It can, it can do a bunch of things. It can, um, it can heat things up. From heat, you can get light. You can spin things. You can move things. What do you do with it? Right? So then you can have to make a bunch. If you start a company 100 years, 130 years ago, what do you do? Right? You have to make a decision. Um, should, I start, uh, should I build a horizontal thing as a product? Should I build a motor? A right? motor is something that a bunch of other people can use with electricity, but it's not very specific. Or should I build a specific verticalized thing like um, appliances, like a vacuum? Right? It's very specific. You know who you're selling to. So I think people who are starting company today with the AI space uh, almost have to make a similar trade-off if you're thinking on the product and business level. Um, and for us, for Notion, we already have some business and product we're thinking on the feature level. And uh, one trick I tend to use is kind of um, is the, the trade that Richard Feynman always talk about. is like you have a bag of a little marble. Each marble is the, the most 
uh, urgent problem you're trying to solve, that whenever you discover something new, you take a little marble out and hit with the new thing you just discovered and see what comes up out of it, right? And AI is moving so fast. Every couple of weeks, there's new technique coming out. And it might just completely solve your problem in a very new way that you haven't thought about. So store your problem in this little marble. And whenever a couple, every couple of weeks, new technique from AI take, coming out, take it out and hit against it you might just bypass your problems who are solving a very interesting way that nobody has thought about. So it's very fun. You know. it's, uh, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, but I think a mistake some people are making is like intellectualizing AI. Like they read the blog posts, but they don't actually like get their hands dirty. And I think one of the things that everyone should do, and you just reminded me of this, is like just have a hackathon inside their company where everyone sort of just like, uh, gets their hands dirty with the technology, but also like thinks about how to like not only build big products with it, but like solve the the sort of the marbles that are uh, that are sticking around, and it gives you sort of a new yeah. lens or tool to attack it with. Yeah, we haven't done one. Yeah, we need to do. One. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's a new type of wood. Like what to do with it? Like you can't allow you to make different trade-offs. It's a really different type of wood. Right? Yeah. Uh, Notion, I mean, I, I, think, I think you turned 10 later this year, if memory serves. Yeah. Uh, it has been a journey, um, uh, obviously lots of ups and downs. What, uh, I'm sure people ask you this all the time, but like, combination, like what advice would you have for people in the audience, slash, like what advice would you have to your former self, given all of the ups and downs you've had so far? Right. Um. First of all, I think advice are very contextual. Uh, most advice are in one context doesn't make sense in your own context, so truly think for yourself right, before you take the tips and tricks from other companies. It's, oftentimes, it does not make sense. So that's kind of like a meta comment. Um, maybe on a personal level, um, especially when we're talking about AI, right? AI is intelligence on abundance. What do you do with it? What's, our job of creating a company and solving problem with like it's, it's some, there's some sense it's kind of existential asking ourselves what what's our role with in the AI abundance world right so uh, I, I maybe worth sharing this a little bit um, for the longest time I feel notion is it's kind of like a puzzle it's kind of like a quest the market has an answer for that it's the hidden out there you just have to try it really really hard to find the answer. Uh, in the AI first world, it sort of does not make sense anymore, right? AI machine is better than playing chess than human, solving any kind of puzzle than human. And so what is the meaning of solving that puzzle? Is I couldn't reconcile with it as, as well. Um, more recently, I see this less of a puzzle to solve, more as a craft, as, more as the joy of just building something and hopefully that's beautiful and useful for other people and myself having, having fun building that. I think that gave me, personally gave me a lot more um, calmness when things are changing so fast around, around us with the AI and all that. So um, yeah, that's a helpful mindset. So hopefully that's helpful for some of you too. Yeah. Very cool. And what, um, uh, you, you mentioned uh, a couple minutes ago kind of the, the, the notion for Startups Plan. If people want to play around with, if either people want to play around with Notion or check out the Startups Plan or play around with Notion AI, like what should they do? Where should they go? Yeah, uh, I, I promise our marketing team to say this. Uh, <laughs> uh, please go to notion.com slash startups, then you will have uh, at least three months, sometimes six months free Notion and Notion AI, all you can use. Uh, we really care about this community because we believe you are all the future of the enterprise and we really want Notion to be used ubiquitously by all the company and startups and personal users. So uh, please check it out. Go to our website and uh, sign up the product if you have it. So. Wonderful. Thank you, Ivan. Uh, it was a pleasure having you. Uh, thank you all for joining. Uh, I'll hand it back over.